Hi everyone, my name is Niels. I'm a machine learning engineer at Hugging Face. I'm working on the Hugging Face Transformers library, which you might know. Uh, so Hugging Face Transformers is basically a library where we provide implementations of several state-of-the-art uh, machine learning models, all based on the original transformer uh, from Google, uh, which is from this landmark paper, Attention is all you need, uh, that Google researchers released in 2017. Um, and so I remember when I was first reading this paper, I really had a hard time understanding this figure and basically understanding how a transformer works. Um, and so in this video, I would like to basically um, make the distinction clear between um, using a transformer at training time versus using a transformer at inference time. So basically, knowing um, how a transformer is trained versus how a transformer is used at inference time when you want to use it to generate new text. Um, so I'm not going to go into the details of the attention mechanism which the transformer internally uses. For that, I refer to the illustrated transformer blog post by, by Jay Elmer, which really goes into the details of the attention mechanism. Uh, but I'm going to focus on like yeah how a transformer is trained versus how it's used at inference time because I think it's important to understand the difference. Um, this will also allow you to understand terms like decoder input IDs uh, and the difference with labels and so on, because uh, I still see a lot of confusion uh, among people, including myself at the beginning when I was learning more about transformers. Uh, it's oftentimes hard to understand how, how these things work. Uh, and so this this is why I would like to make this, this video. Um, <clears throat> so let me be, maybe start by showing you um, so basically how a transformer is used or how a transformer works at inference time. Um, so as you may know, a transformer consists of two parts. So we have an encoder um, as well as a decoder. Uh, and initially the, the attention is all you need paper. Um, they uh, release the transformer for machine translation. So when you want to translate text from one language to another. So for example, let's say you have the English sentence, hello, my dog is cute. And you want to translate that, you want to translate that um, into French. Uh, so that would be something like, salut mon dog, uh, sorry, mon dog, mon chien est mignon. Uh, I think this is correct French. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, well, you might wonder how a transformer comes up with the French translation for this English sentence. So important here is that the transformer doesn't come um, come up with this translation in one go, in a single forward pass. That's not the case. Uh, so let's maybe first illustrate. Uh, so using a transformer at inference time, so generating new text um, and so I'm gonna use some technical terms so basically the first uh, thing that happens when we have our source sentence so let's call this our source sentence um, the first thing that happens is we tokenize it so this uh, becomes something like hello my dog is and then it could be that a word uh, maps to multiple tokens so in this case the word cute might be tokenized into uh, tokens Q and TE. Um, so we call this process oh, tokenization. So let's call them uh, source tokens. And so this is done using a so using a algorithm like word piece or byte pair encoding and so on. Uh, you can actually find all information about those uh, online. So for example, the word piece tokenization algorithm is a famous algorithm used by the BERT model. Um, byte pair encoding is another one, um, which is also a support tokenization algorithm. So we call them support tokenization algorithms because yeah they map words to possibly multiple tokens 
And then the final step that happens before we feed this sentence to the model is uh, we turn it into a sequence of numbers. So this might look something like 38, uh, 69, uh, 54. Uh, actually, I can make up some numbers by just randomly typing some numbers. Um, so in this case, we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six tokens. So in this case, uh, it could map, for example, to this sequence. And we call these the input IDs. Um, let's put that in red because this is our final, like the thing we, we feed to the transformer encoder. This is also what you see everywhere in the hugging phase documentation. Uh, so if you, for example, go to the documentation of T5, which is one of the most widely used models in the Hugging Face Transforms library, you will find the input IDs everywhere. Uh, so input IDs, these are actually the, the things that we feed to the model. Um, so in the sheets of the input sequence tokens in the vocabulary. Um, so what do we mean by that? Well, basically, transform-based models, they maintain a mapping between tokens and their corresponding integer indices. Uh, and we call this mapping the vocabulary of the model. Uh, and so it's nothing more actually than a lookup table between tokens and their corresponding integer indices. And so if you go to, for example, the GPT-2 model, which is another famous transformer-based model, um, and you look into the vocabulary, uh, of that model, you will see that it looks like this. So it's a simple mapping between support tokens, which could be like a single uh, symbol, like a dollar sign, and the correspond and their corresponding numbers. So you can this vocabulary, as you can see, it's in this case uh, it has fifty thousand, around fifty thousand unique support tokens. So these models, yeah, they typically have thirty thousand or fifty thousand. Uh, individual tokens and so the vocabulary of the model is nothing more than a mapping between those tokens and uh, a corresponding integer index. So when we tokenize our sentence here or source sentence uh, into these tokens well we can simply look them up into the vocabulary of the model and this allows us to turn them into uh, integer in the indices which in the hugging face transformers library are called input IDs and this this is actually what we feed to the model. So yeah, neural networks, they don't take text directly as an input. We, we feed these input IDs to the model. And so what does this uh, encoder do? Uh, well, basically it will uh, turn every of these six tokens um, to a embedding, so-called embedding vector. Um, so I can represent this as follows. Um, I'm just gonna again make up some numbers. Um, and we call these the last hidden states, also called embedding vectors. Um, and so we have them for each of the six tokens. So actually, we have them. So this is this here is the embedding vector for the token hello. Then we have another one. Well, I'm going to use some different numbers here to illustrate that these are different uh, tokens. Uh, sorry, different embedding vectors. For This is, for example, for the second token, my, and so on. And so you have them for, oh, you have them for each of the six tokens. Again, I'm going to use different numbers here to just illustrate that these are uh, embedding vectors and so yeah we call them also last hidden states um, so these are like yeah hidden representations of uh, the model these are not human interpretable anymore these are just yeah numbers uh, that the transformer model in this case the encoder of the transformer model is using to map these tokens these super tokens to uh, a vector and so every vector here is of size each of size 768 typically for a base sized transformer because these transformers they come in different sizes uh, if we look at a base sized transformer then each of these embedding vectors will 
uh, be will have 768 numbers. So we have 768 numbers per token. So in this case, we have a sequence of six tokens. Uh, so these last hidden states, um, they will be um, of shape uh, one. So we have a batch size of one here. We are only sending a single sentence through the model. We have a sequence length here of six, and then we have 768 uh, numbers. Uh, and this is what the transformer encoder does. It will simply map a sequence of tokens to a sequence of uh, hidden states. Now we want our transformer decoder uh, to generate uh, at inference time when we are generating new text for a well-trained transformer. We hope to generate the text Salut mon chien et mignon. Now what happens at inference time is actually the following. Uh, we first feed uh, something called the decoder input IDs to the model. Uh, let's also put them in red. Um, and this is actually, well, at the first time step, because at inference time we have different time steps, so let's call this time step one. Uh, at the first time step, um, we pass the so called decoder start token uh, to the decoder. So uh, Oftentimes, this token looks like this, so it's like uh, indicating the start of a sequence. And we again will map this by looking up the vocabulary of the model uh, to a certain number. So let's say the number 102. Um, so simply by looking up the vocabulary uh, of the model, which maps tokens to their numbers. And then what happens is we basically condition the decoder on these final hidden states. So the decoder will basically take each of these uh, six embedding vectors here as an input together with this decoder input ID, which is the integer index of this start token that we feed to the decoder. And then it will, um, similar to the encoder, it will output a uh, vector per token that it gets as an input. So in this case, we've only sent a single token to the decoder. Um, and so it will also output a vector. Again, I'm going to use different numbers here because we uh, we have a different embedding vector. Um, so it will again output a vector of size 768 for uh, this particular token. Uh, so you could also call these last hidden states. We then typically call these, let's call these here, um, the encoder hidden the encoder hidden states and then this you could call it the decoder uh, hidden state we refer to them as last hidden states because actually you also have intermediate hidden states inside the decoder but uh, we are only interested in like the final or last hidden states for each of the tokens but so um, we've only fed a single token here to the transformer decoder and it will generate uh, sorry it will just output a vector of size 768 for uh, uh, for this token and then what happens is uh, we do a matrix multiply so basically we have a, a language a so-called language modeling hat on top which is just a linear layer in, in PyTorch so a linear transformation a linear so basically mat a matrix multiply. Um, and so as this factor here is uh, contains 768 numbers, uh, we use this language modeling hat, which uh, consists of a 768 by the vocabulary size. So in this case, 50,000 um, uh, numbers uh, in order to basically map this vector to another vector, which we call the logits. So the language modeling hat takes this uh, this final hidden state as an input and maps it to another vector of size 50,000. So the size of the vocabulary. So a vector of size uh, 50,000. So the size of our vocabulary. Um, and these logits, these are like unnormalized scores. So it's not that these seven, uh, these 50,000 numbers that they sum up to like one, for example, which would be the case for probabilities. Uh, that's not the case here. Uh, the logits are just 
uh, also random numbers uh, which are not normalized whatsoever. And then um, <clears throat> in order for us to like um, know what the model is predicting as the next token that would come after this start token, uh, we simply take the highest of these 50,000 numbers. And let's say that the highest number is the number that has index 484, for example. Well, this is like the index <coughs> of the token in the vocabulary of the model that yeah, we can map again to a certain uh, to a certain uh, token. So in this case, it could be the token salut. Uh, if our tr transformer is trained well, then it will generate at the first time step uh, after the decoder start token, um, the token salut. And this is like our first time step at the generation process at inference time. And then uh, at the second time step, so this is like a, a generation loop, you could say. The same uh, process basically happens, so I can actually copy this over. Um, so uh, what we do is, well, we have already encoded our source sentence here. Hello, my dog is cute. We will not repeat this at a second time step. We can simply reuse or cache these uh, final hidden states of our encoded sentence. Um, and so we will simply reuse them to condition our decoder. So here I'm just going to say cached embedding vectors. So six embedding vectors each of size 768, um, which we can use. Um, and then here our decoder input IDs will consist not only of the decoder start token ID, but also uh, the prediction that the model made at the first time step. So in this case, it made the prediction of the token salut. Uh, so the tokens here will that we feed to the decoder consist of these two tokens, and then here we will have the decoder input IDs, which consist of the token ID 102 and the token ID um, 484, for example. Um, and then again, the same the same thing happens. So we have already um, obtained our, our embedding vectors or encoder hidden states from the first time step here by, by encoding it. We simply reuse them and we condition the decoder on these embedding vectors together with these two decoder input IDs. And then the same thing happens. Our decoder will output a um, will output a vector of size 768 per token. So in this case, we send two tokens to the to the decoder. So it will actually output like two of these things to uh, so let's call them decoder lost hidden states. Um, Again, different to uh, different tokens get different embeddings, of course, uh, and so on. Um, and then we again place our language modeling head on top to basically um, turn to basically turn these embedding vectors into logits, also called normalized scores. So this is actually also done per token. Uh, so here we get logits out. So it's a vector of, of the vocabulary size per token. Um, so each logit's vector is a vector of size 750,000 so numbers, which is the size of our vocabulary, the number of unique tokens. Um, but actually here, we're only interested in like um, the final token. So in this case, it's the salut token. And there we want to look at what comes after salut. So in this case, ideally, when we take here the, lo the highest logit, the highest score, um, then it should map to the token, like let's say it has index uh, 4,576. Uh, and then when we look into our vocabulary, this maps to the token um, more so and this is this is like the second time step so i'm gonna create a line here to uh, illustrate the difference that uh, this is time step number one this is time step number two so at time step number two uh basically the same process happened so we condition our decoder or transformer decoder on these 
embedding vectors that which we obtained from the encoder. Um, we get our final hidden states, decode the last hidden states out. We place a language modeling head on top, which is which has a 768 by 50,000 matrix, uh, possibly also a bias. And then it will um, turn every of these last hidden states to a vector of size 50,000. And then we take the, we only are interested in the logits vector of our final token that we have, in this case, the salut token. And there we look at the highest score. Okay, it's the in it's uh, the index 4,576. And looking in our vocabulary, it maps to the token mo. So that's time step two. And then, yeah, the, the, the same process is basically uh, repeated. Uh, so at time step three, the almost the exact same process happens. So let me just copy this over. Um, again, we are using our cached embedding vectors or encoder hidden states, which obtained in the first time step. Here we uh, append the prediction by the model uh, from the previous time step. Uh, so these are the decoder start tokens. Um, again, we look them up in our vocabulary. Uh, so in this case, this was the number. These are our decoder input IDs. Again, the decoder <coughs> conditioned on these embedding vectors, as well as these inputs, will uh, compute a embedding vector per token. So in this case, we have sent true, uh, three, three tokens through the decoder. It will output a embedding vector for each of those. We place the language modeling, the language modeling head on top. Um, so note that this language modeling head it's always the same head, like this is shared across the time steps. It's always the same, uh, it's just a single matrix that we are reusing at every time step. And that has been learned end to end by backpropagation. Uh, again, uh, this will output logits per token, but again, we are only interested in like the final token and the logits of the final token. So again, here we are gonna look at like the highest score. So in, in torches is done using torch.arc max. Um, so if you look in the documentation of arc max, this will simply return the indices of the maximum value of all elements in a tensor. And this is exactly what we need. We simply take the logits tensor and then we apply arc max on it to get like the index of the maximum value. And this is exactly, um, well, I'm going to map this a bit higher. Uh, this here was time step two. Uh, and this will map to certain number. Let's say it's the number 66. Um, and then this uh, hopefully corresponds to the token chain. And then, yeah, we have the next time step where we feed this star token, salut, mon, chien, to the decoder, and the same process happens. So, yeah, this is repeated as follows. Come on. And then you might wonder like how this generation process is ending. Well, we simply do this until um, the decoder predicts the end of sequence token. So let me copy this and let's say we have arrived at um, time step 10, for example, uh, and we have already generated the following. Hello, mon chien est mignon. Let's say this is what the decoder already has predicted, and these are the corresponding um, decoder input IDs by looking them up in the vocabulary. So, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, tokens. Well, then what happens here is again our decoder outputs a vector, a hidden state for each of those. So, in this case, in this case, uh, six tokens. So we also will have six of these embedding vectors. Again, I'm gonna use some different numbers here. And so on. Um, and then again, we, we look at the logits of our uh, final token. So here also, Logits can be created using the language modeling head. We apply the argmax operation to get like the, the highest score. 
and ideally <clears throat> let's say it maps to the index 101 and if we look at our vocabulary this corresponds to this token um, well this token is actually known as the end of sequence token um, and then we actually know that okay the decoder has predicted like this is the end of the sequence now we can stop generating and so basically now we have generated um, the translation for the sentence hello my dog is cute but in French um, well actually for these models um, if we have a, like a translation model w which needs to map one language to another we actually have like uh, two vocabularies a voc vocabulary for the encoder and a vocabulary for the decoder uh, but that's that's a detail um, the important thing that I want you to understand is that at inference time so when we are generating new text um, then you can see that this is not a single forward pass with our neural network we're actually um, doing this uh, in a generation loop where we are uh, yeah, generating one time step at a time, one token at a time. So the generation process of transformers, for example, the GPT models like GPT-3, chat GPT, they also generate uh, one token at a time. Um, and yeah, this is important to understand because if you make use, for example, of the uh, generate method in hugging face, uh, this is exactly what, what is happening. Uh, and so you can see as yes, generate method has a lot of arguments uh, let me maybe quickly illustrate this um, with an example so let's uh, install hacking face transformers let's go to the documentation of t5 um, t5 for conditional generation why is this model called t5 for conditional generation that's because it includes this language modeling hat on top uh, which is exactly this thing here uh, which we need to map these final hidden states uh, back to to tokens basically um, and here you can see that at training time uh, sorry at inference time uh, we only need to prepare the input ID so the input IDs uh, are these things here so we have our source sentence the thing we want to feed to the encoder um, so let me copy this here and let me quickly define the model yeah we also need the sentence piece library for uh, running t5 because uh, t5 makes use of the sentence piece tokenization algorithm rather than word piece so this is another support tokenization algorithm um, so then we can load the model and then we can uh, do inference so generate new text uh, so now we will actually apply this uh, process where we have the different time steps this is actually happening rather quickly in uh, Google Colab so in this case you can for example use uh, T5 or let's say translate from English to German hello my dog is cute and then we call the generate method uh, well sorry I wanted to translate to French bonjour mon chien est cute okay that's interesting they also use the word cute in French um, so yeah this is actually what has been illustrated here um, note that there are different decoding strategies so in this case for example at or at every time step we we have our logits or unnormalized scores um, and then we simply took the highest score so here take a look at the highest score so argmax um, and we did this at every time step we simply always looked at the uh, highest score um, and this is known as greedy decoding but actually there are uh, multiple uh, ways to generate or decode text using transformers um, and so greedy is like the yeah the most basic one you could say because at every time step you simply look at the the 
logits, so the unnormalized scores over the whole vocabulary, and you simply take the highest score, uh, the highest probability. But there are more fancy generation uh, methods, decoding methods like beam search, where you actually are considering like multiple possible paths. Um, because yeah, greedy decoding is actually not uh, not ideal because you can uh, like potentially miss high probability word sequences and so on. So beam search keeps track of like multiple pot uh, potential sequences, uh, and this oftentimes results in better generation uh, with transformer-based models. Uh, but so this is all available in the generate methods. So uh, you can actually uh, provide things like number of beams as an argument uh, i think this is also illustrated in this blog post uh, if you want to like yeah use beam search uh, or other decoding strategies when generating text um but yeah this was to illustrate uh, basically uh inference time with a transformer so as you can see it's uh, a process that happens in several time steps now i want to also illustrate how uh, these transformer based models like gpt uh, GPT-2, GPT-3, and so on are trained. And you will see that it's actually quite different uh, from uh, inference time. So, so let's quickly illustrate this. Um, so training time. So when we want to basically, yeah, make the model learn, for example, to translate from one language to another. Um, so what happens is, so we have our encoder. Well, we can reuse uh, this. So we also will need to um, we also will need to oh, tokenize or source sentence. So in this case, the sentence "Hello, my dog is cute." Um, we need to tokenize it. We need to then uh, so for example, T five doesn't make use of word piece, but makes use of sentence piece. Uh, the sentence piece algorithm um, and then we turn them into input IDs uh, by looking them up in the vocabulary um, we send that to the encoder okay the encoder will uh, generate uh, final hidden states so vectors per uh, per token so every token is mapped to a non interpretable uh, vector And so on so yeah this is happening for every of the six tokens that we sent to the model through the model through the encoder uh wait we have one two three four five yeah six oh so we yeah again we have different embedding vectors per token uh and so on and then um the decoder So the decoder needs to be trained to basically generate the sentence um, Salut, mon chien est mignon for this particular source sentence. Uh, but actually, if you look in the documentation of T5 at training time, uh, you will see that during training time, we only need to feed input IDs and labels to the model. And the model is able to compute a loss based on that. Um, and you might wonder how that is possible uh, because we are not preparing any decoder inputs here um, well basically the following happens so if you have the target sentence um, so in this case salut mon chien est mignon um, <clears throat> Basically, uh, again, we do the same thing that we're doing here. We tokenize it. So we get something like this. Uh, so you can say this is the target tokens, the target tokens. Um, and then again, we map them to numbers uh, in the vocabulary of the decoder. I'm just gonna use some random numbers here again. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six again uh, tokens. And these are actually the labels. So these are, this is what we feed to the model um, at training time. Um, and so these are the integer indices of the tokens of the target sequence. 
and this is what the model will need in order to compute a loss. However, when we when we feed only the um, the input IDs, so let me quickly illustrate how the model is able to uh, compute a loss for this. So in this case, let's say our source sentence is hello, my dog is cute, and the target sentence is uh, salut mon chien est mignon. Then you will see that the model is able to compute a loss from this. Um, so internally what actually happens is um, the following. Um, so the model will actually internally create the decoder input IDs automatically by uh, shifting the labels. Uh, and what I mean by that is the following. Um, so of course we need um, we need to feed some inputs to the decoder in order for the model to compute a loss. So what will what is happening actually is the the model the transformer will internally inside Hugging Face Transformers will basically um, take the decoder start token, which was the token with ID 102, if I remember correctly, in our example. Uh, it will basically prepend the, uh, this to the labels and this will be your decoder input IDs um, and so I'm gonna add here so these are created automatically based by shifting the labels one position to the right and prepending the uh, decoder start token ID so basically what we feed to the model here to the decoder you could say is the following but as you can see as a user you don't need to you don't need to create the decoder input ids these are created for you automatically based on the labels that you provide because yeah the decoder input ids are nothing more than the labels but shifted one position to the right as you can see and then we prepend the um, decoder start token ID, in this case, this particular uh, token here. Um, and then, so at training time, what happens is, okay, we encode our source sentence. It's, it's turned into a sequence of final hidden states, um, also called encoder hidden states. Um, and then these are fed to the decoder and the decoder will take those embeddings, those encoder hidden states as an input together with the decoder input IDs. And then again, we have our, uh, well, our decoder will again output a vector, a hidden state uh, per token. So in this case we have, well, we now have seven. We now have seven tokens. Uh, so it will output also uh, seven of these hidden states. Uh, one more so uh, each of those is uh, an embedding vector so I'm not gonna repeat them for seven uh, but yeah these are the decoder hidden states which are the final vectors so remember each is a vector of size 768 in case of a base sized transformer um, <clears throat> and then we have our language modeling head, uh, which is used to um, wait. language modeling head, uh, which can be used to uh, turn uh, each of these final hidden states to logits. So I'm gonna move this up a bit in order to illustrate. Uh, what is happening at training time. Um, <clears throat> so we have our target se uh, sequence or target sentence. These are the labels. So our language modeling hat, which is just a learnable 
matrix, so it's learned end to end using backpropagation. It will turn each of those decoder hidden states uh, to logits. Um, so basically, yeah, each each of those uh, seven tokens also will have logits. So logits, logits, and so on. But I think you get the idea. And then um, for every of these uh, logits, we compute the cross entropy loss uh, between the ground truth, sorry, the ground truth uh, labels and um, the, predic the, the prediction by the model. So let's say, for example, here that the model has predicted that after the to uh, this decoder star token, there is a token with ID uh, 489 that's following. Well, then we will say, uh, sorry, model, this is bad. The correct token that should follow after this token with ID 102 should be the token with ID 584. So then we compute here a um, cross entropy loss between the ground truth, well, between the labels and the model's predictions, which are um well during during training uh th this is a cross entropy loss uh, between what the model predicts so basically the model will predict at every like let's say at this time uh at this uh token position for the token salut it has correctly predicted that after token with id 584 uh, there should be uh, the token with id 292 so then here there will be no cross entropy loss be I think the loss will be zero in that case. Here we will have a positive loss because uh, this token has been predicted wrongly. Uh, and so, yeah, the final loss that you get out of the model is simply a um, a mean or a average uh, of all of the cross entropy loss over this entire sequence. And also note that um, also note that at uh, training time, well, uh, we always train models, neural networks in batches of data. So typically, uh, in order to um, fit several sequences, several sentences in a single batch, we need to basically pot the both the input IDs as well as the labels. So here, we will basically need to uh, add some padding. Um, in order well, we typically do this using the padding token ID. So this will be like this and so on until we have like a fixed uh, size sequence for every for every um, sequence that we feed to the model. Typically, the sequence length is something like 512 tokens. Um, so we pad them up using the pad token ID. So here we will also have encoder hidden states of length 512. So we will have 512 uh, encoder hidden states uh, and the same thing happens with the labels we typically pot them but uh, the labels we set them to minus 100 for um, positions where we don't want to incur any cross entropy loss uh, why is that well that's because if you look into the cross entropy loss documentation in pytorch you will see that the ignore index is set to minus 100 um, so this basically means that every where where the labels are set to minus 100 uh, we will not compute any cross entropy loss. So let's say, well, basically the decoder input IDs, uh, they will not only uh, shift the labels one position to the right, as I uh, write here, they will also prepend the, the decoder start token ID, and they will also uh, replace minus 100 by the padding token ID. So in this case, it will uh, replace the minus 100s by the padding token ID. Um, and then when the decoder, well, when the decoder takes in the sequence of uh, tokens, it will output a final hidden state for each of the tokens, so including these padding tokens. Um, and then using our language modeling hat, this will be turned into uh, logits. Um, but as these labels are set to minus 100, no cross entropy loss. Um, so here, 
no cross entropy loss is computed. Well, actually, you can more generally say that no cross entropy loss is computed for labels or at positions where the label is equal to minus 100. Mm -hmm. So we will actually only compute a loss uh, across these tokens, but uh, the model doesn't need to uh, predict what comes after the potting token, basically. Um, and so this is this is what's happening at training time. So as you can see, it's just a single forward pass. Uh, we have our source sentence, we tokenize it, we turn it into a sequence of integer indices, which we call the input IDs. These are fed to the encoder. The encoder outputs a sequence of final hidden states, which we call the encoder hidden states, also called last hidden state. Um, and then we condition the decoder on both these encoder hidden states and the decoder input IDs, which the user doesn't need to create. Uh, so you can actually also see this inside the source code of the T5 model, for example. You will find there a shift right uh, function. So here you can clearly see that if the user provides labels, if labels is not none, and the decoder input IDs is none, so if the user provides labels and the decoder input IDs are not set, then we simply create them by shifting the labels to the right. And so this shift right function that you can find here in the modeling file of T5 is exactly what I explained here. So the decoder input IDs are created automatically by shifting the labels one position to the right. Um, that's what's happening here. We're shifting them. Then we prepend the decoder start token ID at the beginning and we replace the minus 100s by the padding token ID. So this is exactly what's happening here. We have replaced the minus 100s from the labels by the padding token ID, which in this case I've set to 101. This is just for illustrative uh, purposes. I'm not sure the padding token ID is actually 101. This is just to illustrate. Um, but yeah, this is important to understand because as you can see at training time, we, we just have a single forward pass. Uh, and we compute the cross entropy loss in one go. And so this whole idea is called uh, teacher forcing. Uh, so basically, um, we already provide the ground truth um, previous token to the decoder. Uh, rather, because at inference time, what we do is, yeah, we make the model make a prediction. Like in this case, we make it predict that after the start token, uh, the token salut should come. And then we feed uh, start token plus salut to the model and we make it generate the next token but that's not happening at training time at training time we already have like the ground truth sequence the target sequence and we simply feed that to the model uh, and we make it like uh, make a prediction for the token that comes after each of those ground truth target sequence tokens um, and so to prevent the decoder to look into the future, because here it could actually cheat because we are actually already providing the token ID 584 to the model, but it needs to actually predict that. Uh, and that's why this model is using a causal attention mask. Um, and a causal attention mask, um, I think it's also explained in the Illustrated Transformer by, by J. Elmer, um, will basically prevent the model to look into the future. It can then basically only um, perform attention um, between tokens, between the current token and all tokens that come before it, but not uh, apply attention to tokens that come after it. Um, so this is another important point um, when understanding how a transformer works. Um, but I hope I hope you learned something in this video where I try to illustrate uh, the difference between using a uh, transformer at training time versus at inference time when we want to generate new text um, because as you can see at inference time we have several time steps and at every time step we use the cached embeddings uh, from the encoder and we generate one token at a time whereas at training time um, we only compute a single forward pass and the decoder input IDs are created automatically uh, shift by shifting the labels to the right um, and so yeah, I hope this video will be helpful for you uh, and that you now better understand uh, things like input IDs, uh, decoder input IDs, uh, labels and so on. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you learned something and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.